There are times in our lives when we learn things about ourselves. That is, if we are lucky enough to pay attention. We also learn about others as well. We learn what we like and what we don't in ourselves and other people. Sometimes a situation that looks great turns out otherwise, and some people who look great turn out otherwise. And if we are lucky, we keep learning throughout our lives. These can be perfectly normal situations, or they can be more dramatic situations. The things that we learn depend on us and where we are in our lives. All we have to do is be aware. When I was a junior in college working on my undergrad, I had one such experience. It had opened my eyes to a lot of things. I was enjoying my winter break. My winter break was usually a time that I spent working on being with my family. About a week into my break, my friend Manu said that we should go down to Puerto Rico and go surfing for a week or two. Manu had found a great deal on plane tickets and a place to stay. I was down for that. As we landed, I couldn't help but feel excited. I had been to other places down south. My grandparents and cousins were from Costa Rica, so I had been down there often. Of all the places that I had been, I had never been to Puerto Rico. This would be great and new. And surfing! Life doesn't get much better than that. Manu's new girlfriend Jill and her friend Kelly were coming along. Even though I was single, Manu had assured me that this was not a setup. That was fine, though Kelly was cute with curly blonde hair and blue eyes, so even if it was a setup, that was all right. We caught a shuttle to the town of Rikon, which was supposed to have great surfing. Kelly spent time chatting about catching rays and being surprised at not needing a passport. I didn't explain to her that Puerto Rico is part of the USA and therefore no passport is necessary. I was amazed that she didn't know that. Whatever, she was still cute and seemed really nice. So what if she didn't know geography or history? Nobody knows everything. Our hotel was a surf hostel. It was a unique building with simple rooms and perfect for a place to crash. Kelly and Jill were not so impressed with our place, so decided that they were going to stay at a different hotel. Whatever, our place was cheap and perfect for what Manu and I needed. It was fun. Manu and I had a great time talking about how our classes were going and how happy we were to have time off from the rigors of college. We also discussed how great it was to be away from the cold winter weather. As soon as we had stashed our stuff, and locked our room, we hit the waves. The surf was amazing. The Caribbean water was warm and clear. It was altogether wonderful. We had been out for about two hours. Before the girls arrived at the beach, we surfed in to meet up with Jill and Kelly. Kelly was looking cute, and I could tell that she knew it. That was fine. I like girls who were confident. We took the girls out to grab some lunch before we went back out to the waves. I offered to teach cute Kelly to surf, but she said she wanted to work on her tan. Whatever, the waves were calling. I spent the rest of the day on my surfboard. Manu went back and forth from surfing to spending time on the sand with Jill and Kelly. The girls took photos of each other and took selfies together. I wanted to take advantage of the sun and water as much as I could. I didn't have time for selfies and posting for photo ops. As it started to get dark, we finally decided to turn in. The girls went back to their hotel to get changed and ready for dinner. Manu and I went back to our hotel and took turns using the outdoor shower. We met the girls at a casual restaurant for dinner. Kelly looked super cute. I noticed that she had put on more makeup. I didn't think that it was necessary, but whatever. Looking at the menu, Kelly asked if they had anything that wasn't Mexican. I can't explain it, but I felt offended by this. Kelly didn't seem so cute now. She wanted to take a picture of us all sitting with our food. I kept eating. Whatever, I couldn't wait to get back to the water and surf in the morning. After dinner, Manu and Jill decided to go for a walk on the beach. Kelly offered to hang out, but I told her that I wanted to get to sleep early so that I could wake up early and catch the morning swells. Honestly, I still didn't like her comment from dinner. I know that it was weird, but in truth, it made me not want to hang out with her as much. The next day, I got up at dawn with Manu, and we went out to catch the waves. It was windy and started to rain. Manu said that the girls were going shopping. Wind and rain might be bad for tanning, but it is excellent for surfing. And surf we did. Manu and I surfed most of the day until it suddenly became super dark. It was around 1 and it looked almost like nighttime. We got out of the water just as soon as it started pouring. It was literally pouring like buckets dumping from the sky. We stashed our boards in our room and sat out on the patio watching the storm. The girls returned with their shopping bags. Kelly began to complain about the weather. I didn't listen. I was too busy watching the storm. There were thunder and lightning and crazy strong winds. 
I saw a palm tree fall. The water was already covering the beach and nearly coming up to where we were. The whole area was starting to flood. I was glad that we were on the third floor. It was intense and beautifully scary. The electricity went down. Kelly began to type something on her phone. Suddenly, we heard someone calling for help. Looking over, I saw a group of people standing on a car that was stuck in the fast-moving water. It looked like there were little kids in the group. There was nobody else but us outside. Manu and I ran up to our room and grabbed our boards. No, don't. It's flooding and you'll drown, Kelly squealed. Manu and I ignored her. Jill also tried to stop us. We ran down to where the water was rising and paddled to the car, which was now almost underwater. The group consisted of an older couple and their grandchildren holding onto the car. After helping the people climb onto our boards, we paddled them back to the hostel. As we helped them climb off our boards, they thanked us and introduced themselves. Their names were Jorge and Madi, and the kids were Carlos, Andre, and Mara. Manu went up to our room and grabbed some towels for them. I invited them to stay with us until they could get home. Where can they stay? Kelly whimpered. They can stay with us, I said. But how? Kelly asked. With all of us here, there won't be room for them. We can make room for them, I said. I was feeling annoyed with Kelly's selfishness. But what if they need to sleep here? There are only four beds, and the concierge went home. Then we will make them as comfortable as possible, I said, finding Kelly's callousness irritating. If there is room for you here, then there is room for them. There is food in the fridge and the kitchen. We can pay the receptionist for whatever we use. I offered the kids some of my dry clothes to wear, and we used the hostile kitchen to make them some food. Kelly remained quiet after that. The kids were shivering. So were the grandparents. Manu and I offered them our blankets to help them warm up. I helped put the kids to bed on a sofa in the reception area and Manu told the grandparents that they could sleep in our beds. After helping them all settle in, Manu and I returned to our patio and watched as the water continued to rise. Jill and Kelly didn't say anything. They just kept playing on Facebook. I wondered why I had thought Kelly was cute. She wasn't so cute now. The storm lasted almost the entire night and all the next day. That day, Manu and I helped Maddie and Jorge keep their grandchildren entertained. We made them meals with the food that was in the fridge in the kitchen. We played games and drew pictures and even splashed around off our patio, which was now damp from the encroaching water. The girls kept to themselves. The storm finally ended around 11 the following night. The next morning, I watched the sun come up and turn the sky a beautiful pinky orange. I watched as the water started to recede. When the family woke up, Manu and I made them breakfast again, and Jill and Kelly went back to their hotel. When the water receded enough, Jorge and Madi called a relative to take them home. We exchanged phone numbers to make sure that they got home all right. It was still spitting outside, even though there was some sunshine. Even flooded, it was still lovely here. Jill called Manu and told him that she and Kelly were going home early. Manu was okay with that, so was I. Manu and I stayed for the rest of our planned time. We had dinner a few times with Madi and Jorge and their family who were grateful to us for helping them. That was fun and nice. I love the food that they prepared. It reminded me of the food my grandmother in Costa Rica made for me. Looking back, I understand that Kelly was panicked because of the storm, and that probably was what made her behave in such a selfish way. That is fine, I can feel sympathy for her, but I still didn't want to hang out with her when we got back home. Manu and Jill were no longer a couple for the same reason. I now understand that Kelly may not have been a bad person. I am sure that she is a nice girl, but I learned that time that the qualities that I liked in my friends were the same qualities that I would look for in potential partners. I also learned what I didn't like. As I saw Kelly was pretty at first, I couldn't believe that she did not have compassion for people who needed help and worried only about herself. That quality made her unattractive to me. Hey, thank you for watching. Please click on the right to subscribe if you like the video. And please don't forget to click on the bell icon when you subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. Watch more videos on the left, including our playlist. Thank you.